Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our 8 p.m. watch party of our uh, 10 a.m. online service with Salvo Christian Fellowship. Yeah, we're glad to have you here. I'm Jake. This is Ken. Uh, we know some of you have little ones or some of you just like to sleep in. I know I do, so we're happy to try this out and have you here. It can be a real challenge Sunday mornings to get the, the young ones settled, and I hope that this is really an opportunity to uh, engage some of the couples that might find that a bit more difficult. So we're super excited to try this at 8 p.m., and uh, we've got people in the chat that are ready to, to talk with you and to welcome you in. So here we go. Here we go. Before we get into this week's service, we're going to begin in just a few minutes. Uh, we wanted to bring a few things to your attention. Now, Jake, I know that this week the government uh, announced some pretty exciting news for churches. Mm -hmm. Very. Tell us about that. So, I won't tell you about it. Who's going to tell you about it is, of course, Pastor Dave. Hey, folks. If you followed the news this week, you saw that our province has announced it's moving to the next phase of reopening and has given churches permission to open their buildings for Sunday worship services up to 30% of the seating capacity. Given the number of emails and phone calls this week, my guess is you'd like to hear what we're planning to do. First, please don't expect that we will open up on Sunday mornings very quickly. Along with the permission to reopen, our government has developed a lengthy list of regulations for the reopening. They are steep, as they should be. And we won't take them lightly just so we can be back together. Our board's priority is health and safety, and we require time to make wise decisions. So reopening may sound easy, but when you dig into it all, the requirements for constant sterilization, COVID screening at the door, zero out of town guests, uh, pre-registration and sign up, social distancing, and the safety of our kids. These things will seriously limit what we can offer. There's even special rules for serving communion and collecting offering. And things like kids ministry, nursery, coffee, and lobby visiting are not even options at this time. Well, we're reviewing and taking the government's laid out requirements for all of this very seriously. And we will reopen when our board feels we're ready. But right now, our church staff has been working on a step-by-step -step phased in approach to all of this. That plan will be presented to the board and discussed at the June board meeting. So please don't expect us to reopen until they come to a prayerful, wise decision. Pray for your church leaders as they do this critical work. So what about the meantime? Here's how we can begin to move ahead immediately. Let's take advantage of the opportunity to meet in groups of 10. Let's start a bunch of watch parties all over the area. Get your friends or your small group together to watch the online service in your home on Sunday mornings. These will still need to comply with all the government guidelines for size of group and social distancing and health and safety. Uh, but please take that seriously. So well, we've created some guidelines to help you begin right away and to keep these safe. Make these great celebrations. More than just sitting in a room with your friends watching an hour of TV. Be creative, make them great. Again, our expectations and guidelines and suggestions are available for you. Go to the church website, look under salvachurch.ca slash watch parties. Here's the second thing we can do right now. All of our groups that are under 10 people, our Bible studies and our small groups, our life groups, now you can begin to meet face to face. You still have to meet the same guidelines and everything, and you can follow the same ones as our Sunday watch parties. But I know that some of our groups are entering their hiatus time for summer. That's too bad, now that the opportunity to meet as a group is just beginning to open up. Okay, I know that a delayed opportunity to attend church with your friends is disappointing for many. I really miss meeting face to face, but there's lots to be excited about. And while reopening our building in the near future remains unknown, we will continue to work towards an opening day and we will keep you updated as we learn more. Father's Day is coming up and that means a few things. One of them being uh, every year we partner with the Gray Bruce Pregnancy Center between Mother's Day and Father's Day uh, in their annual baby bottle campaign. And so this year that looks a little bit different. Uh, you can simply go on their website gbpreg.ca 
and find out how you can partner uh, in this year's baby bottle campaign. We would encourage you uh, to do that uh, before next Sunday, which is Father's Day. Let's go on gbpreg.ca for all of the information for that. As we prepare to sing and to focus our hearts and minds on God's Word this morning, allow me to call us to worship. And I'm reading from Psalm chapter 13. Uh, this is a psalm of David, and uh, we're talking this morning about hearing from God. And I feel like this psalm comes from a, a point in David's life where he was not hearing from God. Uh, he says, How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? And he goes on through the psalm uh, to talk more about that. But he ends the psalm with, But I have trusted in your steadfast love. My heart will rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord because he has dealt bountifully with me. So wherever you're coming in from today and however you're feeling, uh, whether you are at a high uh, point in your relationship with God or whether you feel like you're in a valley, uh, it's important for us just to acknowledge God's steadfast love for us, uh, his salvation for us, uh, his heart for us. And so why don't we join in worship together uh, today about, around that. Praise is rising. Praise is rising. Eyes are turning to We turn to Oh, 
visions are your tabernacle. Glory to the Lord on high. God of wonders beyond our galaxy. Thank you to our incredible worship team for leading us in that time. Yeah, I think those songs were really appropriate as we uh, come to the, the message today. Pastor Andy is going to be uh, taking us into the Word and uh, beginning a two-week series on what it means to hear from God. And so I think those songs were really appropriate in that. Uh, before we do that, uh, would you just join us in prayer as we, as we come to God's Word? God, we thank you for uh, who you are. We thank you for your word. We thank you that it's true, and uh, it's, um, it applies uh, just as much today as it did uh, long ago, and uh, we, just, we look to it for uh, our instructions in life. We look to it for uh, your promises and to, to know you and to know your heart for us and for your people and for the world around us. And God, uh, we just thank you that um, that that is one of the primary ways that we hear from you is uh, by spending time in your word. And so, um, God, as we look at this topic of hearing from you, hearing your voice, uh, listening to your spirit uh, this morning, God, we just pray that you would uh, that you would that you would speak, God, that we would have uh, just new eyes, um, uh, new ears, new understanding of what it uh, what it, what it means to hear uh, from you. And so, uh, just be with Pastor Andy this morning as he. Uh, leads us in your word. Uh, give him the words to say, the, the clarity to say them in a way that, um, that speaks uh, to us. Holy Spirit, take the words that he says and just press them deep into our hearts. May we be challenged and encouraged today as we hear your word. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you, worship team, for leading us in that time. Uh, allow me just to say this really quickly. That's not an easy thing to do. Playing to a little red light on a camera 
uh, without a room full of people worshiping is very strange and very odd. And so thank you, worship team, for that. Uh, thank you, Ken and Jake, for hosting us in, that, in this time so far as well. That's not an easy thing to do. Uh, if you're looking to get involved, and maybe that's how you want to be involved, is be in front of a camera, we'd love to have you. Contact me. Let me know. I'd love to have a conversation with you. Also, I might as well say this. Thank you, church, for joining us. Thank you to whoever is joining us. Thank you for clicking on the video, for click, clicking play, for joining us here this morning. Uh, thank you for taking part of your time to, to join us here. Uh, I'm honored that you decided to do that. I'm honored to be standing here this morning and to be able to uh, share a little bit of my learnings and um, growings and everything else. Before we begin, I should probably introduce myself in case you don't know who I am. My name is Andy. I'm a pastor here at Salvo Christian Fellowship. Uh, maybe you don't know who I am or maybe you just didn't recognize me because of my new haircut, but uh, my name is Andy. Thank you for joining us. Let's get going right away. Let's dive into it. I hope you have your Bibles open and ready to go. Uh, if you're making notes, get ready because um, I, I feel like we need to make some notes and remember some things this morning. All right. I've had a difficult time hearing from God. Uh, I've always thought I would have to hear a very clear, audible, Andy, this is God kind of experience. And I've yet to do that. How's that for an intro, by the way, the audible voice of God? I don't know why we always think he sounds deep and booming. If you've heard from God like that, I respect you and I'm slightly jealous of you and also very happy for you. That just hasn't happened for me yet. For the next two weeks, I was going to say a few, for the next two weeks, I want to share my experience. I want to share my learnings and my growth in the uh, learning how to hear from God and then also how do I respond? Because this is a topic I've been dealing with for a long time. This is a topic that I've I've been struggling through and that I've been learning about. And so I want to share that with you. And so let's continue to have somewhat of an honest moment. Briefly, bluntly, the Bible can be very confusing about how to hear from God because there's no magic formula. There's no step one, do this, step two, do that. Yes, we read of Moses hearing from God. And yes, we read of Samuel who also heard from God. And we read of other prophets in the Old Testament. We read of Paul who had a very clear, audible voice uh, who directed him and, and commanded him. And maybe that's why we expect to hear an audible voice of God. Maybe that's those are the examples we're looking at and we expect to just automatically be able to hear a loud, booming, thunderclap voice. Here's some truth that we need to listen to, that I needed to listen to. I think we all do. Just like any other relationship on earth, we hear what we value. Now, I'm not saying that you, because you haven't heard from God an audible voice that you don't value God. But we do hear what we value. Allow me to give you an example. I've been learning the joy that my parents experienced when I was a younger child uh, about having to try to have conversations with me when the TV was on. You see, when the TV was on, when that glowing tube of an electronic device was on, nothing else in the world existed. Yes, that's how old I am. It was a tube TV. There's nothing else uh, important to me but the A-team attacking their arch nemesis or Super Mario Brothers conquering the world on the old Nintendo. Everything else was non-existent. My parents could ask me to take out the garbage, wouldn't hear them. They'd offer me some chocolate, I might hear them. I learned as I grew and matured that relationships, as we most of us know, are more important than a TV screen. And as I learned that, I was able to train my ears to hear my parents. Well, that and also my parents threatened to feed me only Brussels sprouts and water if I didn't listen to them. So that kind of helped too. Similarly, when we begin to build and when we keep building our relationship with God, his voice will become more clear. And let me just say right off the top right now, when I continue to talk about God's voice, it is not an audible voice I'm talking about. If you're a Christian, this series is important for you. Because as a Christian, I hope that you want to hear God's voice. And I hope that you would want to continually and consistently want to hear God's voice. And that you'll even respond to it. But even as a Christian, maybe you're a Christian who has been struggling to hear God's voice. And you're, you're, you're yearning, you're, just, you're wanting it so bad just to hear God's voice. Or maybe you used to hear God's voice and now you don't anymore. 
And so this morning and next week, we're going to talk about that. And I want to share with you again, what I've learned and maybe help you, encourage you, kind of give you some pointers. Allow me to clear up a possible misconception. God is not only concerned with communicating with Christians. God wants to communicate with people and uh, he wants to communicate with people who believe in him and those that don't believe in him just yet. Clear example is Paul. Paul wasn't a believer, yet God spoke to him. And so if you're someone who would say, I'm not a Christian, I'm just checking this out, you know, give me, give me a chance here. This message doesn't leave you off the hook because God wants to speak to you in a number of different ways, which we're going to talk on this morning. I hope whether you're a Christian or you're not a Christian, that this topic of how does God speak to me, I hope this will give you hope. I hope it will give you promise. I hope it will give you encouragement. All of that hope to, uh, I just, I want you to understand and I want you to hear this, that God is wanting to talk, to talk to you. God is wanting to chat with you. God is wanting to have a conversation with you. So what, wherever you are in relationship, whether you've been a Christian for decades or you're not even a Christian yet, I like to think that the next two weeks are kind of important to you because as I said already, God wants to communicate to you regardless of where you are. And so this week, today, I want to talk about why God speaks and how God speaks. And allow me to say this, as I've said already, let me just reiterate it. If you've been a Christian for decades, I hope this message comes as an encouragement to you. Because sometimes we get in this rut, we get into this habit, and we get into our daily devotions, and, and, and just this is what we do. And uh, honestly, sometimes it's good to have a refresher course when it comes to conversating Conversating, having a conversation with God. It's just like a marriage relationship. If I'm not discovering new things about my wife, uh, it's not going to end well. I should be learning things every day about her habits, about her uh, favorite foods, about her favorite whatever. So maybe we all need to be informed and or reminded of why does God speak? There's three reasons. We're going to get to them really quickly, hopefully. Why does God speak? God speaks, number one, to give direction and guidance. In a number of places in the Bible, we read of God speaking to his followers to give direction and guidance. In Acts chapter 1, he spoke to the disciples that needed to replace Judas. In Acts chapter 10, God spoke ministry direction to Peter. God's heart for you, for us, his desires for us is to be in communication with us, to have a conversation with us. And that means to give us guidance and direction. For the last two and plus years, I, as a new parent, I've been learning this over and over and over again. Here's how our little guy is starting to go on his bike. He's starting to go on a scooter. He's starting to go more than just around our townhouse complex, which isn't that big because when he squeezes his honky honk horn, um, yes, I just said that. Uh, when he squeezes his horn and honks, we can hear him uh, wherever he's at. So now he's starting to go a little bit further. He's starting to go, you know, a number of blocks away. And in order to do that, I pull up my phone and I pull up the map and, and I say, hey, this is where you're going to go. You're going to go down this street and turn right and then down that street and then turn left. And you're going to make a big, big square is what you're going to do. And that's, you know, and so I'm giving him very clear direction and guidance. I can't send him out on his own. I mean, I could, I'm getting in trouble, but we're also just not giving him physical, physical directions on his bicycle. We are working at teaching him how to build the necessary skills so that he can follow his hopes and his dreams, his desires. We're day in and day out teaching him manners and please and thank you and how to communicate and how to share your feelings and all that kind of stuff. And through all of this, with our little guy, I've been reminded that God's heart is the same, that he desires to have us listen to him as he guides and direction, directs us, as he uh, guides and directs us towards our hopes and our dreams. For that, uh, for that situation where you're, you're moving house, God wants to speak to you and give you guidance and direction. For that, for that concern about which college or university or how that's going to pan out in the fall of 2020, I don't have no idea. God wants to speak to you. And I'm assuming with that, he may want to speak to you just peace and trust that God's got this. For that big health decision, God wants to speak to you. For that career change, God wants to speak to you, guidance and direction. 
for that relationship that you're very concerned about, God wants to speak to you guidance and direction. We haven't even touched on the how God is going to speak to you yet, but right now we need to hear the why because he wants to speak to you guidance and direction. Whether you're 16 or 86, God is longing to have these conversations with you to help you find the direction and the guidance that we are all so much looking forward to. The second reason, the second way, uh, sorry, the second why is that God speaks to give us warning. From the prophets of the Old Testament, we see that God communicated to give a warning to the Israelites that if they didn't, ch if they didn't change their ways, there's going to be judgment. God's heart for us is that he doesn't want to see his children, uh, his creation, go down the wrong path. I don't want to see our little guy go on his bike and get lost and then I have to go hunt for him. I don't want to see him get hit by a car. That'd be even more devastating. I don't want to see him go right off the dock into the lake, although that would be fun. Don't get any ideas. Um, so that is why I give him not just direction and guidance about where to turn and how to turn and wherever else, but I also give him warnings and I say, if you go down this way, this could happen. So that's your warning. God's heart is to protect us. And so God will speak to us to not just give us direction on the where to go and what to do, but also what not to do and where not to go. I've had so many people in my lifetime that I know that God used to speak through. The messages were warnings. The messages were, hey, have a heads up. The messages were sometimes a smack across the head and smarten up, Andy, because you need to get your life in order. My parents were those people. Of course they were, but I never listened to them because what do parents know? I had youth pastors that were in that position. I had lead pastors. I had mentors. I had peers. I had friends. I still have all those people. And honestly, I have had times, at times, I've had perfect strangers come up to me and speak words of warning from God. The key to all of this when it comes to word of warnings and even the guidance and direction part, but we need to be humble. If we think we know it all, we're not going to hear God. But if we humble ourselves, there's a really good chance you're going to hear God's voice. Third way is that God speaks to us to give us affirmation, to speak hope and encouragement. We read in the Old Testament that God spoke affirmation to Joshua to confirm that he could trust God and that God had chosen him. And God's heart in the affirmation is that God wants to communicate uh, with you and is longing for you, know, longing for you to know that he loves you, that he has a direction for you, and he can do that. He can speak guidance and direction. He he can speak warnings. He can speak affirmation of just hey, here's encouragement. Here's here's confirmation that you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. He can do that through a song you hear on the radio or maybe in this day uh, any device. He can do that through his word. If you're reading along through the 2020 Bible reading. How is God's love speaking to you? So three reasons why he speaks to us, guidance and direction and warning and affirmation. The bigger question is, how does he speak? It's one thing for us to know that he is speaking, and it's one thing for us to know the why he is speaking. But if we don't know the channel he's broadcasting on, if we don't know how, where he's streaming from, if we don't know um, how he's communicating, then we're not going to know how to listen. And so let's take a walk through the Bible and discover some of the methods that God used to speak and what we can learn from it. We read in the, the Old Testament through the prophets and the judges and the leaders that God spoke through people like Isaiah and Jeremiah and Gideon and David and Moses. And so what does it look like for us in 2020? Well, it means that God can use the leaders in our lives to speak to us. It's not the only way, but it's one of the ways. I would also say this, that in 1 Thessalonians 5, we read that we are to test things. I grew up with, with the understanding that if God speaks something to me through one person, I should, chances are, oh, I just get a second opinion. God's not going to speak one thing through person A and a completely opposite thing through person B. And so test it and see what God is saying. But God spoke through the prophets. God can speak to you through a message uh, at church on Sunday morning. He can speak to you through a personal conversation with somebody. Uh, for me, that usually involves food, ice cream, chicken wings, hamburger, coffee, donuts, cake, lemon pie, steak. The list goes on and on and on. But for me, it's, it's, it's often been through personal conversation where God will use an individual, whether they know it or not. One of those people in my life has been a, a, a very good friend of mine named Maddie McCage. Maddie uh, is, is a great guy, a little crazy sometimes, but a really <laughs> great guy who God has used to speak a number of things to me. 
God used him to speak the hard truth that I needed to hear that I didn't want to hear. God has used him to speak love and encouragement that I needed to hear in the very dark times. God has used him to speak joy and fun and silliness when I needed a good laugh. The simple, in a nutshell, God has used Maddie McCage to speak just simple God's love to me. And so who is that for you? Who is that close friend that just doesn't tell you what you want to hear because anybody can do that, but they tell you what you need to hear. That is the voice of God. God speaks to us through personal conversation. He speaks to us through different leaders in our life. God can speak through ordinary people. God can speak to you through uh, the mailman, through someone at the grocery store. In Acts 14, 15, we read that Paul and Barnabas were doing some amazing things and, and the people were trying to make them into gods and yet they just looked and said, no, we're just mere men. And there, there's a mini sermon in there, which I'm not going to touch on a whole lot. It's just going to say this. One of the lessons there is that we need to stop putting people that God uses on pedestals. It's not good for them and it's not good for you. But the second thing and more relevant for this sermon this morning is that God uses ordinary people to communicate things to others. God used a donkey. We read that in Numbers 22. If God can use a donkey, God can use ordinary people. God can most definitely use you. What is God's heart in all this and what does this mean for us? It simply means this, that God will use ordinary people to speak to you. And God will also use you to speak to others. The key thing though is that we need to be humble. When we're humble, and when we simply say, God, speak through me, that is the time that we put aside our agendas. We put aside our emotions. We put aside our thoughts and our plans. You see, God will give us the grace to speak truth. And, and he will give us the ability to speak love to those that need it or that they want it. But we need to be humble. First Peter 5, God opposes, opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. If you humble yourselves, God will give you the words. I mentioned Manny McCage. He's no superstar. He's just a regular Joe from Michigan. He thinks he's a superstar sometimes, but he's just a regular guy. He drives his kids to schools. He drinks coffee like the rest of us. He, what's it saying? He puts his pants on like the rest of us. He might wear a Superman costume underneath. I don't know. But he's just a regular guy who makes mistakes just like the rest of us. And yet God still uses him. God used, um, God has even used the lives of high school students to speak to me. And that can be humbling. You want to talk about humbling yourself. That can be very humbling. God speaks through ordinary people. God speaks through leaders. God speaks through the written word. 2 Timothy 3 we read that all scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness. And so because God speaks through his word, how has God spoken to you through your daily Bible reading? We would love to, I know I've mentioned this a number of times, we'd love to hear about it. If we can understand the why God communicates, and if we can understand some of the how God communicates, we need to talk about what it looks like to tune in so that we can be ready to hear and respond to God's voice. Listening to hear God's, or sorry, learning to hear God's voice is the easy part, but learning to respond to it is where it gets a little difficult. Here's the reason why. For some reason, when we tune into God's voice, God begins to ask us to get out. Now, before you freak out and ignore everything else and turn it off or click pause or whatever, Hang in there, please. I'm going to say it one more time. When we tune in, God begins to ask us to get out. When I look in the Bible, this is confirmed by what I read. Most of the time when God spoke to people, he asked them to get out of their comfort zone so that he could use them in a great way. Genesis 12, go from your country to a land I'll show you. Exodus 3, go to Pharaoh and tell him to let my people go. Nehemiah, Nehemiah 1, leave your job and rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. That's a very... Uh, faith building exercise to just leave your job and go. 
Jonah, a classic get out of your comfort zone story. Jonah 1, go to Nineveh, the city of your enemy, and preach to them. To the disciples in Matthew chapter 4, follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. Matthew 28, go and make disciples. The list goes on and on and on. In my experience so far as a follower of Jesus, I have learned that a good part of the time that God is speaking to me, there is a level of comfort that I have to give up. And in that level of comfort that I have to give up, if I don't give it up, I won't be obeying and I won't, I won't be able to follow through with what he's telling me to do. How's that for giving you hope today? Encouragement. Get out of your comfort zone. Yay. So maybe, maybe that's you right now. Maybe you're saying, why should I tune in to God's voice? Why should I try and hear it? Or maybe you're saying, I'd rather not tune in uh, because God is going to ask me to get uncomfortable. So I'm, I'm okay where I am right now. Can I challenge you? with a couple of verses from John chapter 10 and John chapter 15. John 10, 10 says that we read that Jesus came that we may have life to its fullest. And God's heart in that is that his desire, his dream, his goal is that you have a full life. That does not mean a full bank account. That does not mean a stress-free life. But it does mean having peace and comfort and trust and joy when that stress comes, when the bank account isn't quite full. You're, you know that God has it all under control. When the stress comes in life, you have the trust in God. God's asking you to tune in so that he can give you a full life. Life to the fullest, full of love. Can I say that again? Full of, full of love. I'll be honest. We're, we've been having honest moments all morning. I'll continue to do so. I'm not always full of love. I'm, I'm sometimes full of anxiety and anger and impatience. Basically, it's just general annoyance. That's not love or joy. That's not the fruits of the spirits that we sing about as kids and as we study as adults. But Jesus came that we would be full of love. Can we think about that for a second? Or what does it look like? What does it mean to be full of joy or peace or patience, kindness and goodness and faithfulness and gentleness and self-control? Are you full of self-control? I'm not. Not at 1130 at night when there's a bag of chips calling my name. I'm not there yet. I'm not full of what Jesus wants me to, full, to be full of. Which is why I need to continually continually tune in to the voice of God. God is not asking you to tune in to torture you or to live a life being pruned. We, John 15, prune. I'm the true vine. My father is a vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes. It looks like either way you go, you're going to get hurt. Either you're going to be taken away or pruned. But pruned is a good thing. Whoever binds me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers. Pruning will happen, which isn't fun. But allow me in my short time of being a landscaper and learning how to uh, assess the situation when it comes to trees and plants. Allow me to share with you a quick explanation of pruning in case you may not be aware of it. Simply, if you don't prune a plant or a tree will spend all of its energy trying to send nutrients and, and, and healthy energy to the, to the dying part. And in doing so, it actually hurts and harms and even kills in some instances the healthy part of the tree because it's sending everything it can to, to make healthy the, plant that is, or the part that is dying. When you cut off the dying branch or the dying part, the tree won't waste time sending the nutrients to the dying part. Instead, it will now send them to the rest of the health areas, less causing a tree to grow or a plant to grow as healthy as it can. I'm not an arborist in, in, in any way, but I did learn a little bit of, about pruning. Pruning sucks. Sometimes when you prune a tree or a, a, a bush or a plant, it looks ugly. But if you wait, it will come back more full and more alive than ever before. There's a sermon in there. I don't have time. I think you're catching what I'm trying to say question is this why be pruned why get uncomfortable when we hear God's voice because 
God uses us best when our comfort is, is low. God uses us best when we have nothing left so that he can flow through us and, be, and we can be used by him. God uses us best when we have nothing left and we have nothing to show for ourselves and so we're just humble and uh, we're just like, God, just, okay, here, I got nothing left, it's all you. That's when God uses us best. When our comfort is lower, it requires more trust and God loves it when we trust him. When I have trusted that still small voice, it was spoken to me. That still small voice was spoken to me in my quiet time, in my prayer time. It was spoken to me from trusted friends. It was spoken to me uh, when I read a Bible passage or I heard a song or when someone randomly texted or called me, which obviously wasn't so random or I, did, I thought it was, but clearly it wasn't. When that voice got me out of my comfort zone, God has rewarded me for it. Honest moment number three or four, I lost count. Two and a half years ago, I was called to move up here, to serve, to do what I can to help. That was very clearly getting out of my comfort zone, as well as my family's. And yes, I firmly believe that God has rewarded me for this, not because I get to stand in front of a camera and preach, but because my faith in God has grown even more than it ever was. Are you wondering if you're hearing from God? Are you wondering how you can better hear the voice of God? Here's, here's an idea. Listen for a voice. Listen for a little nudge, for an idea to pop in your head, for a feeling, for a gut sense. And if all of that is asking you for, to get out of your comfort zone, chances are that's the voice of God. Do you have to go and make things right and apologize and ask for, ask for forgiveness? Will that cause you to be uncomfortable? Chances are that's the voice of God. Do you need to go and have that Matthew 18 conversation with somebody and let them know that they've offended you? Are you not looking forward to that? Yep, that's God. Have you had a sudden idea that came out of nowhere that made you initially respond with, um, what? I'll give you one guess where that most likely came from. God, through people, through songs, through the Bible, through his Holy Spirit, speaks to us. And we can hear if we just stop and try and listen. If we humble ourselves and if we just pause. As I continue to try to tune into God, he is continually pushing me to get out. To get out of my comfort zone. To get out of myself and step into what he has for me. God wants to get your attention and he wants you to be tuned in so that he can do the same for you. This week, my challenge, my encouragement to all of us is to be tuned in to see how God may ask you to step out of your comfort zone and to be able to use you so that others will know him. As I wrap up this morning or, or this evening or whenever you're watching, the most important step in hearing God's voice is to have a relationship with him. God will still speak to you whether uh, whether you're, you're with him or not, whether you have a relationship with him or not, but to continually tune in, to continually hear the voice of God, it's important to have a relationship with him. One of the things that God speaks is you need me. And so maybe God has been speaking this to you for a while. And you've never responded. Maybe uh, when I said those words earlier, you were reminded that God has been consistently trying to get your attention, but you have never given your heart to him. And so this morning or tonight or this afternoon, whenever we're watching this, tonight is your chance. Today is your chance. Right now is your chance to step out of your comfort zone and give your heart to him for the first time. If you're watching online, this may be a brand new experience for you. We have people ready to pray with you and for you. Just click on the prayer request button. Uh, and honestly, at this point, if, you, if you're making a decision right now to uh, accept Jesus, to follow Jesus, to, to, yes, I've heard the voice of God and I need to do this, you can email me. Simply email andy at sawwellchurch.ca. I would love to hear from you, from you and have a further conversation. But don't let the fact that this is on a screen be weird. God can speak to you even right now. Will you pray with me tonight?
Dear Jesus, tonight, today, right now, I want to step out of my comfort zone and give my life to you. I believe that you love me. I believe that you want a relationship with me. I believe that you died for my sins. Come into my heart. Make me new. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Pastor Andy, for that incredible message again. Um, we are about to move into a time of worship. So just before that, Ken has a couple things to remind you of. Yeah, after the, after the message, uh, we like to provide a space for you to reflect on what, how God's speaking to you today. Uh, it's all about worship, and so uh, we're going to have some worship songs here that you can uh, sing along with uh, if you choose, or however you, you worship, however God leads you to worship. This is all about worship, and uh, we've got uh, opportunities for you to engage in prayer. If you'd like prayer for yourself, or, or you have a need that you'd like to pray for somebody else, and you want to pray with somebody, uh, just simply click that prayer tab, and uh, you'll be joined into a chat with somebody from our prayer team that's standing by and would like to uh, pray with you. Uh, if you're new uh, or newer to our church family and you've not connected with us before, uh, you can do that by just clicking the Connect tab. Let us know that you're watching. Uh, we'd love to be able to follow up with you and say hi uh, after the service or outside the service, and so that will let us do that. And then giving is an act of worship. And so uh, if you would like to partner with us in giving in some way, uh, you can do that just by clicking the Giving tab, and you can see all of those different options online. So uh, we're going to just enter another time of worship here uh, and uh, with some songs and so uh, let's join together.
Well, thank you for spending some time with us this morning. Uh, if you aren't connecting with us, uh, with us online, uh, we would love for you to do that. Yeah, for sure. We have all the social media, so if you want to connect with, with us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, the YouTube, whatever you, whatever you like, whatever suits your fancy, we'd love to hear from you. On all of them, if you will. Stay connected with us as we continue through this journey of uh, this COVID-19 time. Uh, stay up to date on what's going on. But as you leave today, allow me to just speak this blessing over you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. God bless you. We'll see you next week. Uh, right back here again, Sobble Church Online, 10 a.m. service. We're looking forward to it.